Hello everyone, welcome back once again to the kitchen, and welcome back to Get Cooking with Rev. I'm Rev, and today, we're not really cooking anything. I decided to take a break from all the meals I've been making, and actually show you guys how to make one of my favorite desserts. Uh, I got this recipe from a cousin of mine. She got it from her son. He saw it somewhere, uh, liked the idea, wanted to try it. He asked her if they could try it, they tried it, it ended up being his favorite thing for a while. I don't know if it still is, I haven't talked to him recently. But she had told me about it, and I tried it, and it's actually pretty good. So, I'm going to show you guys how to make it today. So, what is this magical dessert that I'm talking about? It's a homemade ice cream cake. Who doesn't love ice cream cake, right? Alright, so I'm going to flip the camera around, show you the ingredients and tools you're going to need, and then we're going to get not cooking. Alright, boys and girls, the first ingredient we're going to need is two boxes of ice cream sandwiches. Wait a minute, ice cream sandwiches, that takes all the work out of it. Sort of, you'll see. Uh, these are just regular vanilla because that's all Publix seems to carry. They don't carry any other brand other than their own. Uh, normally I would use um, uh, cookies and cream, but if you can't find those, regular vanilla is fine. There are 12 in each of these boxes. We're not going to use all 24. I think we end up with like 4 or 5 left over. But you'll need two boxes. Next thing you'll need is two regular sized tubs of these are the 8 ounce tubs of Cool Whip or you can get the one larger 16 ounce tub uh, either way it doesn't matter for some reason somebody bought uh, the two smaller tubs so I was like well I can use those next item this item varies because it's not actually in the original recipe these two items are the only thing that are in the original recipe I like to add things to my recipe so I like to add my favorite candy bar or in this case Oreos now you're going to be crushing these up and putting them on as a topping uh, you can do it with your favorite candy bar like I said you can crush up like a Hershey bar Butterfinger Kit Kat whatchamacallit whatever candy bar you like or just some M&Ms or something Reese's whatever and those are gonna be your topping we're using uh, Oreo cookies today like I said it would have probably went better with the cookies and cream ice cream sandwiches but I couldn't find any so, got our Oreos. Next item, something I just recently decided to add in the last time I made this for my mother's birthday is some Hershey syrup or any other chocolate syrup that you have laying around. And the last item you're going to need is, of course, your cake pan because we're making a cake. Now, these are fresh out of the freezer. These have been staying out for about 20 minutes because you want them to be easily spreadable and if they come out right out of the freezer they're not very spreadable they're real stiff so probably the day before you're going to make this take these out of the freezer and move them into the refrigerator and let them stay in the fridge overnight uh, then the next day they should be about the right consistency and stay cold so you don't have to rush through it I've let these sit out for a little bit because I did just take them out of the freezer because I forgot to do it last night so they've been staying at room temperature uh, however long it took me to go take a shower and get dressed so probably about 20, 30 minutes. But you don't want them to be too soft to where there's no consistency. So I'm going to put these back in the fridge momentarily. I'm going to put these back in the freezer until we're ready for them. And then I'm going to get crushing up some Oreos. So I'm going to do that and we'll move on from there. Okay, so it took me a minute to figure out exactly how I want to do this because I haven't actually crushed up Oreos before. Uh, so I wanted to put them between something so I can easily transfer them from the countertop into a bowl. Uh, so I found a piece of parchment paper. I still had some a roll left over from when we made the no-bake cookies. So now we want to open our Oreos, which these ones have the great little lift tab here. And we're going to take, I don't know how many, let's just grab about five for right now. One, two, yeah, five works. We're just going to kind of lay them out like so. And I'm looking to see if I have a meat tenderizing hammer, which I don't believe I do. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're just going to fold the parchment paper over so it doesn't go everywhere. Make sure your cookies don't double stack. And then just mash them up with your fist, I guess. Get back in there, cookie. Try not to make a mess all over your counter. Hit them gently, you don't want to break your hand. Now let's take a look at what we got. 
peel the parchment paper back. Uh, that's about what we're going for. That works. Okay, so we're going to do that a few more times. So then we take our bowl here, set it there, then you just lift up the parchment paper, use it to kind of form a funnel, and just shake off the cookie. Now I guess I'm going to do this a couple more times. I'm going to probably do about, uh, what did I do there, five? I'm going to do about 15 or so cookies. So we're going to do them five at a time. Here's another five. And this one I'm going to double fold it over just because there was some spraying out that side. But then, same thing, just kind of mash them up. As I said, if you have a meat tenderizing hammer, it would work good. But, you know, the good Lord saw fit to give us our own hammers, right? <laughs> not to force any religious beliefs on anyone, just saying whether you believe it or not. <laughs> it's up to you. So there's another five mushed up. Now I'm going to loosen up all these little bits that are stuck to the paper just because we don't want to waste any. And if we end up not having enough for what we're doing, we can always mash up more. So that's ten. Like I said, I'm going to do five more because I think that'll be plenty. All right. So that's, that's the entire first column minus two. And then I had to take three out of the next column. So we're just going to do the same thing one more time. Probably doesn't take all that mashing, but try to make sure I get nice little crumbly pieces. Now if you were doing candy bars, it probably won't work quite as well using your fist. It might, I don't know. I never tried it with my fist. But um, basically you can just crush up a candy bar in the wrapper if you have to. Just kind of, while well, it's still in the wrapper, just kind of mush it all up. Uh, try and do them while they're well refrigerated just because you don't want all the chocolate to melt off of them when you're trying to mush them up. So maybe freeze them and then do them right out of the freezer. But then they might be a little bit hard to mash up. So somewhere in between. May refrigerate them overnight then break them up. So now we have our topping. So now we're going to get started on making the actual cake. Okay so we've taken one box of our uh, ice cream sandwiches out of the freezer because we're going to need to peel all of these. And as we peel them, we don't want the other box to be sitting here melting. So we're going to layer them in the cake pan. They just want to peel all the wrapper off, like so. And then you just place it, which way would be better to go, this way. Place it in the bottom of the cake pan. Open your next one. this way so you can do about four here four here and like one or two on the end so that'll leave you a two left over from this box which will actually go into the next layer once we get to that point so do layer them in the pan as you're opening them just so you don't accidentally open ones that you don't need which will mainly be in the second box but we also want to have a grace period between the first and second box as well. So I can fit about half of one there. So I'll show you how to do that once we get towards the end. So then this one goes here. And if you get to a point where they're a little cracked like that, don't worry. Just put that side down like so. Four. Okay. Now I can fit one there, so I'm going to do that. And 
like so. Okay. Now what you want to do is grab yourself a knife, because what we're going to do is cut our next one in half and put it here and here. So we are going to cut this one lengthwise, right in the center. It's best to put this down on a plate or something when you're doing this. I don't feel like getting out another plate. So just very carefully, I am using a butter knife, not a sharp knife. It goes right through them. And just slide that one in on the side there like that. This one in like that. Now we got two more here. Don't worry too much about the side being a little bit open there. That's fine. Okay, so then this one, what we're going to do, obviously that's a bit too long. So we're going to figure out whereabouts we need it. About there. We're just going to cut this end off where we just scored it, like that. Pop that down there. And now we do still have a little gap over here we can fill in. And we still have one here, but we're not going to worry about that one. So let's just go ahead and use up our last ice cream bar. I think last time I did these, I might have positioned them slightly different because I ended up with like two left out of this box. But no big deal. So we're just going to take this. So you can see they're starting to get a little bit softer now, which is why I left the other box in the freezer for now, because otherwise it would uh, be starting to melt already. I'm just kind of cram him down into there, figure out how much space you got left. About there. And cram him down there, like so. Now again, there is space over here, but don't worry about it. Okay, so that's our first box done. I'm going to pause real quick while I clean up the garbage, and then I'll show you the next step. Alright, so we got our garbage cleaned up and put away. Now we want our first tub of Cool Whip, cool whip out of the fridge. Not the freezer, the fridge. I'm going to open it up carefully, like so. Now get yourself some type of flat spatula like this if you have one. And you're just going to want to take a nice glob of it. This is still a little bit frozen, so it's not going to be very easy to spread. But you just kind of want to make a layer, like so. Well, maybe it'll be alright to spread. All the way across the top. You'll probably end up using up this whole tub. So don't panic. It is still slightly frozen in the center. Probably should have gave it a few more minutes sitting out while I was doing the other part. It probably would have been fine. But that's alright. But you want to basically just spread all this whipped cream right over the top of this. Get all the good little drops out of the bottom. So basically there you see the whole tub's been used. Now just spread it around the best you can, make it kind of even. Give it a second in the air, it'll start to thin out to where you can actually spread it. Otherwise, if you let it sit in the freezer it kind of turns like this consistency of almost ice cream makes it real difficult to spread which is what we don't want don't be afraid to turn your pan if necessary <laughs> and just kind of pull it all around get a good coverage of everything normally it spreads a lot more evenly than this but like I said I didn't quite let it sit out long enough but this is the inner layer, so this doesn't matter. I'm probably going to go ahead and take the other one out of the fridge right now. Just to let it defrost a bit more before I go on to the next step. So basically once you got a nice clean pull like this, that's roughly what you're looking for right there. Get a little bit more over here. Like that. Alright. 
So you see that? I'm going to go ahead and take the other tub out just so it can defrost a bit more. I just noticed they grabbed two different ones. This is actually light, but whatever. Okay, now we're here. So our next step comes in our Oreos. So just going to take a few handfuls of those and sprinkle them around. Like I said, don't be shy about using up your Oreos. If you need to crush up more, you got plenty of time to crush up more. I don't think we'll need to though, but we might. Who knows? But you want a nice good coverage with the Oreos. I might crush up a few more. So yeah, don't throw out your parchment paper right away just because you're done crushing the Oreos because you might want to crush up a little bit more. Alright, so as you can see I don't have a whole lot left here. Might as well just go ahead and use all these up and I can just crush up more in a second. Alright, so there's our first batch of Oreos. Now, like I said, if you are using your favorite candy bar, you might want to grab a couple of them just to make sure you got enough for each layer. Now, we're going to take our chocolate syrup and just very carefully drizzle it over the top. I know it's kind of hard to see with all the Oreos, but you just kind of want to give it a nice, like that. Just kind of make a grid with it. All right. So now I'm going to go ahead and crush up my next set of Oreos. So I'm going to do that off camera, and then I'm going to come back and show you the next step. Okay, so I crushed up 10 more cookies, not 15, because I want to go a little bit lighter on the next layer. You get your other box out of the freezer, and you basically just repeat the same process. And place one. Actually, I probably should start them in reverse. Actually, I might already be because I rotated the pan a couple times. But you kind of want to do them in reverse of where you did so you don't have those two little bits together on both layers. But if you do, no big deal. It's all right. Give them a little bit of a press down. By now, your whipped cream should be melted enough that you can actually kind of form it. Actually, I could probably just put a fifth one right in there, can't I? Let's try that. Five. All right, that fit. I don't know why, but it did. This pan must get a little bit wider towards the top than it does at the bottom. So, yeah, just go ahead and lay them all the way across then. So you're just going to do this till you get to the end, again. <laughs> I did just drop that on the floor, I'll pick it up later. <laughs> I don't know why these are fitting across the top, probably because it's right up at the edge of the pan where last time I made it they were still down a little bit. And I still had to cut them to make them fit. Or maybe this box is slightly smaller than the others. Who knows? So there's five. Now I got two left to work with here at the end, but we'll make it work somehow, right? Last time I ended up with like four or five extra ones. So now I got this big pocket at the end. I don't like that. I don't have any more of these to fill it in with. So we're going to break this one about 
there. Yeah, I guess that's all I can do. I can slide them all down a bit. That'll work. Just so there's not so big of a gap. Yeah, normally on that first layer, I end up with two extra ones, and I use them up here, then I end up with like four extra ones, so I got enough to fill those in with. But for some reason, this time I didn't. All right, so I'm going to clean up the trash again. I'll be back to show you how to finish this. All right, in case you haven't figured it out, you want your second tub of whipped cream now. And for some reason, this tub wants to fight me on opening. There we go. Come on. There we go. And again, we're just going to put our whipped cream all over the top. That extra couple of seconds of being out helped a little bit. Still not quite where I want it, but it'll work. Like I said, had I actually put this in the fridge last night instead of leaving it in the freezer, it'd probably be fine right now. But that was my mistake because I forgot I was going to be making this today. Because I actually originally intended to make this yesterday. And I didn't have the whipped cream out. I was like, okay, I'll make it tomorrow. Spaced out on getting the whipped cream out again. So rather than wait a whole nother day, we'll just make do with what we got. Okay, so we're just going to give this another little spread around like we did on the last layer. Now, like I said, the original recipe didn't call for all these cookies and candy bars and everything that I'm adding to it. It was just the ice cream sandwiches and the whipped cream. You do two layers and that's it. I like to add to mine, like I said. So, man, that gap really bugs the hell out of me. I wish I had something to fill that in with, but I don't. So just kind of spread your whipped cream around the best you can to make it unnoticeable, I guess. <laughs> if your whipped cream's not spraying too well, just keep monkeying with it. Eventually it'll loosen up. It's still kind of thick here in the center, so just keep pulling it that way. And see now eventually you get some over there but you don't want to thin out the center too much. Usually I make them look a hell of a lot better than this. Everything's just kind of not coming up mill house today and uh, yeah, just having to make do with what we can. All right, so as you can see, I'm kind of getting a nice smooth texture there, which is what you kind of want on both layers. Normally I'd have enough to kind of fill in this gap over here and this gap over here, but I don't. So, whoops. Yeah, so we just want a nice spread all the way across like so. Good enough. Now, again, just going to top it with our crushed up Oreos here. Some of these didn't crush up too well. I'm going to go a little bit lighter, that's why I only crushed up 10 instead of the 15. I'm going a little bit lighter on this layer, just because there are a lot of them in the middle. It's like that big cookie chunk there can be broken up. And just going to spread this around. Fill in all our little gaps here. Get some over there. A little bit on this back edge. And I just kind of sprinkle the rest around. Until you have something that kind of looks like that. And now once again we're going to take our Hershey syrup and just kind of give it a light drizzle. And kind of see a little bit more of what I'm doing this time. Like so. That's all you want. Don't overdo it. Now, you take this and you put it back in your freezer and let it freeze back up for 
three, four hours, overnight, whatever. I really wish I didn't have that big ass gap there, but you gotta do what you gotta do, right? So this is going back in the freezer and I'll catch up with you guys later. Basically you want all the whipped cream and everything and the ice cream to re-solidify. And it is two layers, so like I said, give it a couple hours at least. But I will check back in with you guys later tonight and show you how it turned out. Alright guys, so there we have it. It has been it's been about five hours that this has been in the freezer. We made it early around 8.30. It's now almost 1. And basically, like I said, you just want to let it freeze long enough for the whipped cream to firm back up. As you can see, I'm not leaving any dents in it when I tap it. So the ice cream should be nice and firm. The chocolate syrup isn't real runny anymore. So everything's frozen up the way it should be. So about four or five hours is good. Now let's cut into this. I'm going to cut myself a slice, dish it out, let you guys see what it looks like on the plate. And then I'm going to try it, let you guys see what I think of it, which obviously you already know that I like it. And that'll be the video. So let's cut into this. All right, guys, sorry about that. So apparently my video stopped recording when I was cutting it, but basically I just did half and then quartered or halved each of the halves for quarters. And then I did two thirds cuts that um, lengthwise. And then I dished a piece out for myself right here on the plate. And there is our delicious looking ice cream cake. It looks a little bit better from this side because that is a little bit longer on the top for some reason. And it's been sitting out for a couple minutes while I was offloading the videos. So let me see if I can get a decent shot there. Maybe I'll use that as my thumbnail. There we go. And that is our ice cream cake. Alright guys, so there you have the ice cream cake. So, it is on the counter behind me here. I'm not going to sit at the table, but I am going to let you see me try it. So let's get our fork. Take a nice big chunk out of that. Normally it wouldn't crush that easy, but this has been sitting out for a few minutes while I offloaded videos. I'm going to come back up here. Mmm. That is delicious. So if you want to know what it tastes like, it tastes like ice cream sandwiches with cream, Oreos, and chocolate syrup. That's all at the same time, and it is delicious. It is best to eat it cold out of the freezer. So we'll get a piece, put it right back in the freezer, eat it right away. Don't let it sit too long because whipped cream is starting to melt a little bit because I've been waiting 10 minutes to offload the video so I could finish recording this episode because I forgot to do it before I started back up, even though I said I was going to. So that is it for this episode, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. Try it at home for yourself. It is delicious, especially if you like ice cream cake. So I'm going to go finish this before it melts all over the place. And as always, thank you guys for watching. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, share the video. Links are in the description. And until next time, get cooking.